How did you manage to cross so many countries with a scooter? So many of you ask me. This video is about the most boring and my blogging part of motorcycle travel. The paperwork! No, I hate paperwork. I will start with the easiest document to get and that is the International Driving Permit, IDP for short. It's a small booklet with translations of a driving license. Bigger rental companies and immigration make ask for the IDP if you plan to drive or ride as a visitor. Even if it's not required, having the IDP with you actually gives corrupted officer one less reason to ask for a bribe. A ticket? Yeah, yeah. Okay, shukriya. Visit internationaldrivingpermit.org to find out how you can apply for your IDP in your country. And the next document is like a passport for a vehicle, and that is the Carnet de Passage. Let me first explain how a foreign vehicle gets into a country. For some, the vehicle owner had to place a big deposit before they enter. Some countries impose duties on vehicles sold there. It can be as high as 800% of the vehicle value. The deposit is like a guarantee that you will not sell the vehicle and avoid paying the duties. Vehicle owners could only get the deposit back when they exit the country with the vehicle. A big hassle to deal with this huge amount of money, right? That is where the Carnet de Passage comes in. It allows you to deposit the guarantee with the authority in your country. The Carnet de Passage is a yellow A4 size booklet. Every inner page of the booklet consists of three parts. The counterfoil, importation voucher, and exportation voucher. When you import your vehicle into a country, the custom officer stamps the counterfoil and keeps the importation voucher for the record. When you leave the country with your vehicle, the officer stamps the counterfoil and keeps the exportation voucher. The authority returns the deposit when the vehicle returns to the original country. To find out how you can apply for the carne, visit carnedepassage.org. Sounds more convenient, isn't it? Well, the bad news is the deposit amount can be very high. Back in 2015, I placed a guarantee of 10,000 Singapore dollar for my scooter with the Automobile Association of Singapore. As of now, 2021, the guarantee deposit for motorcycles is revised to 5,000 Singapore dollars. Every country has different procedure for the Akane application. You need to check with the issuing authority on the process. For all Singaporean viewers, if you find this cost too much, you can just buy a vehicle in other countries. And there's no blood-sucking COE. The good news is, not all countries require the Carnet de Passage, like the countries in grey on this map. The next paperwork you have to deal with is the visa. Visa is the permission for a person to enter and stay in the country for a stated purpose and period. How easy or cheap is it to get the visa? It depends on the diplomatic relationship of your country and the country you wish to visit. Do check with the respective consulate on the process of visa application. My advice is, try to get all the visas before you leave. If that is not possible, you may need to plan consulate visits along your route. If you are travelling with a vehicle, chances are you will enter a country by land border. I love this Pakistan! And do take note, if you enter a country by land as compared to by flight, the visa procedures and period may be different. I'm in Iran! For some countries, visas on arrival is only available at the international airport and not at the land immigration. There are many other things to consider for visa application. I've written them in the blog post and the link is in the description below. Well, I was let through the border really easily. You know, sometimes I really love the Singapore passport. You can just go anywhere without people checking. I mean, the check is not that stringent on you. Sometimes a carne and a visa are not enough. You may need to get a local guide too. The guides escort you from the time you enter the country until you leave. Some countries just do not allow independent travel with your own vehicle. It can be for your own safety, or maybe, the country just doesn't want foreigners stumbling into some highly confidential places. Hi. For my route towards Europe from Singapore, two of such countries are Myanmar and China. 
I chose to cross Myanmar because it was a smaller and less expensive country to cross. Then, if you can't continue travelling by land for any reason, you may have to deal with the shipping of motorcycle. There are two ways to it, either by air freight or sea freight. Air freight may seem to cost more than sea freight. However, sea freight is usually subjected to high port fee. Plus, it is not uncommon to have delays for weeks or even months. As for air freight, even if there is delay, it is going to be only for a few days. From what I read on forums, some custom ports are more difficult and expensive to clear than others. So I do recommend to read up accounts of other travellers and they may give you important information that can help you in deciding the route. Do your research well. Find out the red tapes that you may encounter along the way. You'll be less caught by surprises at the border. In my next video, I'm going to show you how and where to find all this information. Motorcycle travel involves costs and hassle which not everybody can easily afford. However, if you live in a big and diverse country, you can start by exploring your own country first. Remember to subscribe to The Wandering Wars for more travel stories and tips. At this moment, we can only dream now and travel later.